Mario Batali's restaurant La Serena opened in New York just under a year ago, and the reviews were just okay. But now he is making a change. Batali brought on chef Anthony Sasso to create a new tapas menu at the restaurant that they are hoping will kick things up a notch. What does that mean? I am here to find out. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you brought here today that, um, you know, I heard it, you're trying to make things more exciting and make things a little different and challenging. Here we kind of like went with a little bit more bolder feel. The plates are small, so you got to make sure that everything on the plate kind of has an exclamation point. This is the Hamon Globe. Yeah, tell me, let's go deep and let's start this as an example. What, what about this is different from what someone would typically see at a tapas restaurant? What did you do differently and why? Any tapas restaurant, you're going to see a whole bone-in, ham leg, back leg, carved uh, by somebody um, from the ham, right on the bone, right onto a plate. So we figured, how do we change that experience of not so much the showmanship of the guy with the sword plating right. this perfect product onto a white plate. So we investigated a lot of ways to kind of like make it 3D. We're wrapping it around a salt globe. And then inside of it is a candle. So the candle is actually filled with the fat from the ham leg. And at the table it's lit and you're kind of supposed to, you know, play with your food. It's a do-it-yourself dish. On top of these little pieces of toast is what we're calling melon crack. Okay. Um, it's a little technique that I didn't invent, but I stole from Brooks Headley, the ex pastry chef at Del Posto. You're meant to have a little bit of some raw melon on top, then hit this with some of that fat. Oh, so this is a whole event. You really made, turned it into not just a dish. You're at a bar. Something. You're not at a table. You should be having like a lot more fun over here. Um, a little bit different experience. All right, so I'm going to put some pork fat on my toast with the melon and the crack candy. I'm not going to wait for you. Uh, yeah, please, go for it. <laughs> Underneath here, it's super pink. It's almost the same color as the flesh. Yeah, yeah. The flesh of this is really nice, so when you look at it, it's really well marbled. The diet of the pigs, this is the best ham that we can get in this country. Um, it's almost like Wagyu of uh, the cured meat world. Everything about the product is cured and aged in southern Spain um, for years. This usually has a minimum of at least two years aging in salt, and then it comes to the, this country, or it stays there. Yeah, it goes through different layers when you bite into it, where it's that saltiness, but then sweet and sour, and then the texture the of the toast, bread. The hot toast, the cold yeah. cantaloupe. This waxy fat. Mm. Tell me about the next dish. What should we try next? Let's go into let's go into the gamba. When you're having a shrimp that is this fresh and bright, you don't want to overpower with too many flavors. That's kind of what the olive oil mousse is adding, adding this slightly creamy texture without adding an overpowering flavor. The first thing you do, you want to pluck it, the tail meat from the head meat. So make sure you get everything in there. Ooh. That shrimp is really nice. It's super sweet. Uh, hits you with that saltiness in the beginning and the olive oil at the end. It's, shrimp texture it's really is simple. It's really simple. Simplicity. So the, the shrimp, usually like the hard time as a chef to play with shrimp is the texture of it can be a little bit weird or mealy. Mm -hmm. You got to cook it perfectly. This we just kind of sprinkle a little bit of sea salt right on the grill and cook the shrimp on it for 60 seconds on each side. Are you going to eat the head? You. I've had this before. You've had, okay. I'm going to slurp it. There's no clean and, and nice way to do this. It's like salt water in there, it's great. Yeah, but you also get like the headiness that you get from an yeah. octopus. Like if you ever have the, the head of a pulpo, it's the same thing. It's like just a little hint of like kind of, you know, gaminess or something, but mm -hmm. I don't let that thing leave the plate, the whole meal. It's the bone marrow of the, of the ocean. The chicharron is super fun. It's really light and crunchy, having this chocolate mousse with it. It's not only about the flavors, but it's about each different texture. It's thoughtful. Make sure you get a piece of ham, too. It definitely like wraps everything up once you get that salty, sweet thing. And the chicharron, I mean, it's just like kind of like a vehicle for the flavor of everything else. Alone, it doesn't have that much flavor. But the texture is really fun. That's the whole thing about yeah. it, the texture. It's supposed really to bubble texture. up like a balloon and, and get really puffy and airy and crunchy. Yeah. But I guess you should have it with the hamon because that's. And this the name is like the, the goal of tapas and eating at the bar. You know, we've been eating with our hands the whole time. The hamon was a hand plate, the gamba you ate with your hand. We want you to like lick your fingers, love the flavors of these dishes, get a little dirty if you have to, um, <laughs> and just get into it. All of the, the ingredients on here function like the ingredients of a banana split. We have a banana that's been sitting in this warm bath of Brazilian rum before we flambe it. The foie gras mousse sits on top of some crumbled buttered bread. The syrup on here instead of hot chocolate sauce is a Negroni reduction. 
I don't know, is there a right way to eat this? I would go in for the mousse first. Mousse, mousse you can first, almost, okay. like, no matter where you start, bring it to the end of the plate because all the ingredients are on the outside, and you'll get a little oh, bit of everything. You got a big chunk. Should I get a big chunk? Start big and then slow down towards the end. You want the first one to kind of be like the, did that just happen bite? Okay. And then you realize kind of like how rich and good it was and you slow down a little bit after that. Mm. Oh man, that really is I love this dish. a dessert. And that cherry at the end. I, I like thought it was going to be really wrong. rich. This dessert. Yeah, I was so nervous it was going to be too rich for me and coat my mouth, but it was actually like a really light cream, like a whipped cream almost, which is a slight bit of savoriness. Is it? But it's full foie gras. It's all only foie gras. How, foie gras how and are salt. You we're curing it, it overnight um, for 24 hours, and then the next day we're taking it out of that out of the cure, the salt cure, um, and whipping it in a KitchenAid until it looks like a mousse, kind of like you're making whipped cream, but you're kind okay. of like yeah, the texture is very much like a really nice soft, kind of like a comp, like a like a room temperature butter. Yeah, which is the sign yeah, yeah. of like a perfect foie gras mousse. This is a good ending, right? It's a happy ending. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> so Anthony Sasso's menu definitely brings a new interesting aspect to La Serena. Sasso is almost nerdy, and just from even reading the menu, you can tell that he put a lot of thought in making it at least appear as creative as possible. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to watch more, click here. I, I want to keep going, even though it is rich and um, and, and flavorful and enveloping uh, and so warm.